If you happen to be following along this morning on the YouVersion app, there's a, there are a number of polls, questions, and things that you can uh, participate in. But there's one question you have to wait until we get to that part of the message because it says, put a caption on these two pictures. You have to be able to see the two pictures because they're going to be on the screen. Okay. So uh, if you follow along with that, uh, get ready, get prepared, and we'll, we'll move forward with that. Kids, um, you'll notice something that we use later, uh, later on in the message, just a little bit later. I'm going to ask you about one of the pictures and see if you can tell me what it looks like. It may look like something that you've had before or that your younger brother or sister has. Okay? So as we go through that, um, I want you to keep, keep watching. And I've got a couple of other things that I want you to do through this time. Ed, if you'll uh, start me there. This morning we're continuing uh, in the direction that I really believe God wants us to go. Last week I talked about endings and the fact that endings are not to be feared. And endings are just the thing that has to stop so that the next great thing can happen. Remember the pictures that we used? Uh, those were on purpose. You know, the things that ended were the beginning of something wonderful and something awesome and something new. And Jesus said in his word that you don't put new wine or new wine into old wineskins. You put it into new wineskins. And so we're using... Uh, that terminology, the new wineskins, as we move forward in this. The, these two quotes are a repeat from last week. New spiritual life calls for, a, for new forms of expression. And another author said, you can't put new ideas into old mindsets. You can't get new results with old behaviors. Now, I think that's extremely important for us to understand. You can't get new results with old behaviors. Right here in this place, we need to recognize that. Sure. You can't get new results with old behaviors. Now, that goes for our Christian life. When Jesus saves us, whether you are 4 years old or 8 years old or 40 years old or 140 years old, when you're saved, you're made new. Jesus does something inside you that makes you new. Now, when you look in the mirror, you're not going to look like a different person. You've got the same color hair and the same color eyes. Your breath stinks just as much in the morning as it did the day before. But there's something different inside. And you know it's true. You know that God is doing something in you. And he's made you new. And so the old things that you did, you don't do anymore. Tripping the little girl walking through the hallway with her books used to make you laugh. Now that Jesus lives inside of you, you realize that's hurtful. You don't want to do that. Because that wouldn't make God happy. There are new behaviors, new ways that we act. That's what that word means. We do things differently when Jesus comes and lives in our heart. And the reality is for a church, for a body of believers, for a specific location of, of the church, we're an outlet. I heard someone uh, say it this way not too many days ago. Um, he was talking to someone on, a, on an airplane, and they were talking about, and she was asking him what he, what he did, and he was a preacher, and she, he didn't really want to shut the conversation down, and sometimes that does when you say things like that. And so uh, she said, well, what do you do? He said, well, I work for a corporation that has outlets in nearly every country in the world. And nearly every city around the world. We're, we're involved with helping people with hospitals, education. We've got outlets all over the place. We take care of people with 
clean water and new homes. That's the corporation I work for. I, I work for a corporation that they just continue to do that and we're growing all the time. And eventually after he gone through and built up and all of that, she, she was amazed and astounded. And she said, would I recognize the name? And he said, it's the church. You and I are part of something absolutely massive. But we are a specific location, a franchise, if you will, of God's church. Just like the McDonald's over there close to the Bilo is owned by somebody different than the McDonald's, I think this is right, than the McDonald's on Heron Circle, or it might be the one at the other end of Highway 9. Between the three of them, two of them are owned by one, and one of them is owned by somebody else. But they're all McDonald's. They all have the big arch in front of them. But if you go into a McDonald's, and how many of you have ever gone to a McDonald's that looked different than the one that you're used to going to? You ever been to a McDonald's that looked different on the inside than the one you're used to going to? Traveled or whatever? Well, every church, every location, every franchise is going to look a little different. It's going to sound a little different. There are some things that are absolutely the same. Can you get a Big Mac in any of those? Yes. You can even get a Big Mac in Russia. I got one in Italy. A Big Mac. They even called it a Big Mac. Well, it's not the language. They, they speak English, but that's what they called it. <coughs> but there are some things that are absolutely the same, but there are things that are going to be different. They're going to be different wherever you go even in the church, just kind of like McDonald's is that way. But for us here in this place, we want to be the church that God would have us to be. But there are some mindsets that we're going to have to let go of one in order to take on another. And mindsets are kind of tough. We're going to talk about that for just a minute. But I want you to look at these two pictures and see if you can figure out the mindset here. What is the mindset here? And if you're following along, these are the two pictures for the caption. What in the world changed? It's a different mindset. Different way of looking at things. Different way of perceiving, a different way of looking at the things around them. In order for us, right here, Spartanburg, First Church of the Nazarene, the first one, in order for us to be a vital church in our community in the next 40 to 50 years, we have to adopt some new mindsets. And we're going to begin with 10. And everybody said, uh, 10. But we're only starting with two each week. <laughs> They're not 10 points to the sermon this morning. Um, we have to be able to get some new mindsets in place. You see, there were mindsets that helped us get to this place. There were people that thought that it was important that Jesus Christ was lifted up in a community. There was a pastor many years ago. He, he was coming from out west, came this way with a few dollars in his pocket and stopped in a place called Spartanburg. And he said, I believe that God wants to build a church here. A church of people who know Jesus, who learn about who Jesus is. And so he went to what was a pretty rough section of town, to be perfectly honest. It was where they could afford things. And people <coughs> began to come to know Jesus. Now, I have to be clear with you. There were churches in Spartanburg before us. Does that surprise you? There have been churches in Spartanburg planted since 
we started this church. But in order for us to continue to be a vital part of our community, and vital refers to necessary, you can't do without. If our community is to see us as a vital church community, our community has to see that Jesus makes a difference in us. It's going to require some new mindsets. The mindsets that said that the church was worth mortgaging your own home was a bygone day. That used to be, it used to happen, but people don't generally do that kind of thing anymore. This is just a definition for mindset, just so you, you get what I'm talking about. It's a fixed mental attitude. It, it predetermines how you respond to things. If you think girls are yucky, then that's how you're going to respond. If you happen to think that black people are this particular category, then you're going to respond this way. If you happen to think that white people are this way, and you're going to respond that way. If you happen to think rich people are in this category, you're going to respond that way. If you happen to think that people that have nasty looking clothes are in this category, you're going to respond that way. Mindsets matter because the way we view people, situations, and things become the habits that, that we use, the habits that yes. we get into, sure. the attitudes with which we approach everything. I want this to be positive. And so I try to state all of these in a very positive fashion. But the reality is something has to end for something to, new to begin. Nine months of pregnancy had to end for a new baby to come into the world. That's right. <clears throat> Carrying little baby everywhere they went had to end for them to learn to walk. So although we're looking toward the positive and the great thing that God wants to do for us, we will have to realize that something has to end. Some of you have had jobs before that, that you liked, that you were satisfied with, but then you got a better one, or you got, a, you got one that you liked better, sorry for that, you got one you liked better, and you're really glad that you switched. Not all of you are in the perfect position, I realize that. Here are a few obvious examples of mindsets. Mindsets that may stop us from doing something. It couldn't be done before, it can't be done now. Now that's a mindset. Anything's good enough, it's just church after all. And I've heard that. I've heard that in my lifetime. It's just church. It doesn't have to be perfect. Well, I get the parts of that, but God deserves our very best as well. So something has to change. Here's one that you may not be as familiar with. You can't cross the equator. It's the end of the earth. Did you know that when Christopher Columbus was born, this was the attitude of the world? You want to know what the world map looked like when Christopher Columbus was born? This was the map of the world, the globe, if you will. The entire world, as far as they knew. And anything outside of that boundary, if you traveled on a ship, you'd go over into nothingness. <coughs> it wasn't just the boundary of the map. For them, it was the boundary of the whole world. You see, Africa's there, well, part of Africa, and it's a little skewed, but part of Africa's there. You've got, uh, let's see, you've got Spain and Portugal over here, and Italy here, that little blue thing, and this is the area over here where Jesus was born. 
This is India, though it's much differently shaped than that. And this is China. And they knew that there was an ocean over there. Apparently all the water flowed off the edge of the earth. Someone, Prince Henry, I believe was his name, in Spain, if I've got my history correct, I tried to look at this. He and others believed that you could travel farther than this, than this map. That there were places beyond this map. Now the reason that was important was because over here, lots of spices, lots of silk and luxury items that the people over here wanted. The people in here were Muslim. And they didn't want the people over here to go over here, so they made it difficult as they were, as they were conquering more and more land there. See, the 21st century is not that different in some ways. But because they wanted these products, they were trying to find a way. And so they said, well, we can go down around Africa. Well, no, you can't get around Africa. It, it's the end of the world. There's an equator down there, and, and that's, it, you'll just drop off. Well, Prince Henry commissioned some people to begin to travel, and they went a little farther and a little farther and a little farther and a little farther and a little farther. And somebody named Christopher Columbus said, you know, I've been hearing and I believe that there's another way to get to the Orient, to where we want all those spices and all those silks and all of those things. There's another way to get over here because I believe it's round. And if we go this way, we'll come around and end up here. That's why the first explorers called the Native Americans Indians. They thought they had come upon India as they'd gone around the world. But they didn't realize what an important discovery they'd made. In 1490, excuse me, in 1490, there was no new world. In 1492, they discovered what they thought were places they had been, never really realizing that there were two continents in between. They found a whole new place. But the old mindset said you can't. You'll fall off the equator. If you try to go that way, you'll fall off the edge of the earth. The earth is flat. It's not round. You can't get around it. But there were people who thought that the risk was worth it, and so they said, let's try it. And the further they went, the more they tried, the more they learned. And actually, the person who traveled down the coast of Africa and ended up going around the bottom of Africa and finding that they could get to the Indian Ocean around Africa traveled more miles than Christopher Columbus did to cross the Atlantic. But it's a new mindset. But a new mindset implies that there's an old mindset. Now, Romans 12, 1 and 2. You're familiar with this passage of Scripture, I'm sure. You've heard it before. Romans 12, 1 and 2. It's a real simple one, easy one to memorize. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, and he's talking to the church, those who are already part of the blood-bought, those who've been saved, those who've accepted Christ. Brethren, by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Renewing our 
of mind, new wineskins, new mindsets. Donna, were you able to get those for me? They're, they're bringing them back up when they okay. count. Okay. So they're bringing them. That's fine. I'm going to try to use some familiar slogans, and kids, I may need your help on, on some of this. I want you to tell me what this looks like. I'm going to use slogans or trademarks and some things like that um, to just kind of help get this into our brain, something visual to help us remember these five pair of new mindsets. And the first one for today, there we go. The first one for today looks like the label of something that your younger brother or sister may have. Fisher Price. Fisher Price. Very good. But we've changed it a little bit. All through life, seek, laugh, grow. Now there it says play, laugh, grow, and that's great. But for us, all through life, seek, laugh, grow. That's just the graphic, to, the little slogan to help us keep hold of what we're talking about this morning. So here's the first one. We will celebrate the wins. That's good, isn't it? All of us like to celebrate the wins. Bethany loves celebrating the wins, like hoo-ha, right? You know, and everybody joined in. That's great. That's awesome. We will celebrate the wins. And maybe this is the one that's a little bit different. Leave the failures behind. Because you know what? We've made mistakes. I've made mistakes. You've made mistakes. Some things have worked. Some things haven't. We have to leave them behind. What did each of you travel in today to get here? You know, what'd you travel in? Jesse? Came in a car. Car, van, truck, SUV. None of you rode a horse, did you? Yeah. Right? Okay. You didn't bring your horse and buggy to church this morning? <coughs> did you know that the car, the automobile, was a dismal failure? I mean, the thing, the thing only went six miles an hour. You can run 12 miles an hour if you're fast. I think that's right. The car was a dismal failure. It just didn't work. Every time you turned around, it had a flat tire. The roads were terrible. I mean, you could only put two people in it. You could only go a few miles. What good is it? What's it worth? kept working with it, kept improving it, kept doing more and more to it. Henry Ford started the assembly line so that it wasn't every piece was made by hand for a specific car and you could suddenly produce cars for an amount of money that people could actually afford. We have to leave the failures behind. And we've had some. We can be honest. We've had some failures. And they've been for varying reasons. <coughs> Have you ever lost a basketball game? Have you ever missed the touchdown? Have you ever been not one of the medal winners to cross the finish line. For every great athlete, they've all experienced that. For every great athlete, they've experienced the loss, the failure. But in order for them to become a great athlete, they had to decide to leave that Let's look at Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. General Electric Power. Philippians chapter 3. The 
Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, <coughs> Colossians. God eat popcorn. What was that? God eat popcorn. Salvation. Now you're confusing me. <laughs> General Electric Power Company always seemed, seemed easier oh, okay. for me, but it was my simple brain. Okay. So, <laughs> Philippians, Philippians chapter 3, beginning at verse 10. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. You know what? I got these, uh, I got these turned around. Well, we'll use part of this. I, I know why I put it here. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, or resurrection to new life. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend or take hold of, grasp, that for which also I am apprehended or taken hold of, of Christ Jesus. Brethren, church, people, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Yes. And then skip over with me to the yes. next chapter, verses 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men, the Lord is at hand. Be careful or worry for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, asking with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Flip-flop those in the order of what we're talking about. We celebrate the wins. We need to be able to leave the losses behind. You know what we do when we leave losses behind? We stop blaming. When we leave the losses behind, we say, okay, that was then, that doesn't have to take place anymore. It doesn't have to happen, it doesn't have to be, and we're going to get over that. Do you suppose that a husband and wife have ever said harsh words to one another? If I stopped there, how would you answer that? Um, The first principle of any kind of marriage counseling, you have to let that go. Why is it right for marriage but not for the church? It is right for the church. We have to leave the failures behind and then do what? Press on. Yes. We celebrate the wins. And there are wins and we can celebrate them. Sometimes they're small. That's okay. You know, Bethany's game this weekend was not the WNBA championship. That's okay. Celebrate. Maybe we didn't win 100 people to Jesus this week. But there was one. Celebrate the wins. Leave the failures behind and press on. You see... Celebrate, you understand what I mean? Celebrate. And sometimes we have to leave the failures behind. Because we don't always do exactly the right thing at exactly the right time. I doubt very seriously this was her first trip around the track. She was on a college track team at a meet that she had qualified for, but she fell. She busted her knee. One of the other runners stopped to help her up, but what do you think she did the next time they said, we've got another meet coming up? Oh, can't do it. 
I, I remember I fell. <coughs> or do you think she got up and did it again? Because what he tells us to do is keep running, that we press on, that we keep going, that we keep moving, that we keep moving forward the way that he wants us to. The second mindset, each believer or disciple, whichever word you want to choose, is expected to and is seeking to grow. You know why? Because God is clear that we are growing until we're dead. That's His plan. Because once we stop growing, we back up with God. His Word is clear. There are lots of people, even in the New Testament, letters written to the church, to the brethren, to people that have been following after Christ. There are, there's letter after letter that says you've got to keep going, keep learning, because if you don't, you fall away. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. This is the purpose why we have spiritual gifts. That we henceforth no, no more, but let's see, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men, or the cleverness, the tricks, deceitfulness, and the cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, for whom the whole body, fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual or effective working in the measure of every part, make an increase of the body unto the edifying or building up of itself in love. If we're going to be a vital part of our community for the next 40 to 50 years, we're going to have to adopt the mindset that we must all be growing. It doesn't come to an end. It doesn't stop. I was in class Thursday. I'm 53 years old. I went to college for, to, to preach. I've had lots of years of experience, but you know what? I learned something Thursday that I didn't know before. A few weeks back, Travis and I went to a conference together, and you know what? I learned some things that I didn't know before. Yeah. Each and every believer, we need to, as their brothers and sisters in Christ, expect them to grow just like they expect us to grow. See, it's a two-way street. It's not you must grow, but we together all must grow. Yeah. And if we're not going to do that, then the church will be made up of people who used to. And we won't be a vital part of the community. Need some pictures to help you know what it means for all of us to grow, all of us to grow together, to learn, to keep growing, to keep learning, to keep knowing, regardless of our age, regardless of, of what goes on, we just keep growing, we keep moving, we keep moving forward, we encourage one another, we challenge one another to keep growing, and we're also honest enough that in love we can speak to one another. Because growth is what God made the world to do. That's how he designed humanity. It's a cute little girl. But let me tell you, if she still looks and acts just like that, if she's 16, not good. If she's 25 and that's it, that's where she stopped, that's not what God intended. 
Well, don't think I'm being cruel. I realize there are people who are developmentally or physically challenged. I understand that. I, we're not talking about that. God expects us to grow. It's what he created us for. Here are those two things. And I don't know, were you guys able to grab, did you happen to grab the bookmarks? Thank you very much, Max. Um, you can go ahead and hand them out now. This would be a good time. These are the two things. I want you to have them in your hand, so that's why I made this bookmark for you. Um, the mindset, we will celebrate the wins, leave the failures behind, and press on. Each believer disciple is expected to and is seeking to grow. Those are extremely important things for us as a church. Last night, I had something happen, and this morning the Lord brought, brought it to my mind and, and brought it to my mind in such a way that I would use it this morning. Have you ever struggled to get your point across if you and the person you're speaking to didn't speak the same language? Now that's, that's easy, that's kind of obvious if you're talking about you speak English or American and somebody speaks Spanish or something like that, but sometimes we can both be speaking English. But we're not speaking the same language. We're not talking about the same thing. We are not looking at something the same way because our point of reference, our language that we're using is different. You know, if you do technical stuff, you know, Richard, I know you've run into it. You do certain kinds of technical things, and it's English, but the glassy eyes prove that you're speaking a different language. I asked for soup last night. And I asked my waiter for just the broth, not the stuff in the soup. When the soup came, it was so full of stuff, there was hardly any room for broth. Now, we had some language difficulty. I mean, he speaks Spanish very well. He speaks a second language. I know a few Spanish words. But I wasn't able to communicate to him exactly what I was looking for because we were speaking a different language. I believe that God is showing us that we are not always speaking God language. He's teaching us in his word. And we're not necessarily grabbing hold of it because we're not speaking the same language. You see, he told the rich young ruler to go and sell all that he have, had and come and follow him because he realized that what he had was more important. He didn't say everybody has to sell everything they have, but he did say that we would take up our cross and follow him. He said we would leave father and mother behind. He said that, that we, would, we would even hate family in order to follow him. I mean, there are things in here that are difficult for us and we pass over them as if we're not speaking the same language as God. And that has nothing whatsoever to do with King James or New Century Version. We're not always speaking the same language that God is speaking. But what he is saying to us as a church, as a body of believers in this specific place, in this specific location, as a part of the whole, that he needs us to be a vital part of our community, to lift up the name of Christ. And these are some of the ways that we need to be thinking yes. in order for that to happen. I've asked you many times before, when's the last time God overwhelmed you or did something amazing to you or chastised you? All of those things are signs that we're still listening, we're still hearing, we're still speaking the language that he can communicate with us in. New wineskins. New mindsets. Stand with me if you would please as this song plays. Chance I'll need sound. Let's bow our heads. Lord, we thank you so much for who you are. We thank you for all that you mean to us. And I pray that as we hear these words, that we'll be reminded 
of your great desire for us that you have beautiful things in store for us. Help us to submit ourselves to you and to be willing to speak your language.